This video is to explain what net metering is and can it work for you. Here we see the typical household meter not moving. And now we see where it's moving, but it's moving in the opposite direction to your meter. This is because power is being fed in to the grid. In a second, we're going to see this meter slow down. And then we're going to see it spinning in the opposite direction when I adjust the power so that now the uh, power being consumed by the consumer exceeds the amount of power that we're feeding in. In actual fact, no power is being fed in. And we can see the wheel turning in the conventional way, conventional direction, probably similar to your house. It is always best when the power is feeding the other way because then you can either get a credit for it or in some cases get paid. But what if you have a digital meter? Will our type of generator work for that application? Absolutely. Here we see the typical digital meter. This digital meter is typical of most households or small businesses. If we take a look at the numbers, we can see this customer is using 197.15 uh, kilowatt hours. If we notice the lines underneath the numbers, you'll notice that they're actually going in the opposite direction. And you'll also notice that the numbers are not increasing. That is because this customer is using a system whereby he is feeding into the grid more than he is consuming. If, on the other hand, the customer was drawing some power from the grid, and feeding some power into the grid at the same time. Let's say he was drawing slightly more than he was putting in. Then the customer's numbers would only reflect that power which was not generated by the generator. This system is known as net metering. In this customer's case, his meter will not register the amount of power that he is actually feeding into the grid. But the good news is, he's also not being billed for any power that he can generate. Some of the older type wheel, uh, I call them wheel type uh, meters, actually have a ratchet in them, and they also do not register. But the good news there again is that you're not being billed for any amount of power that you're feeding in. If you do wish to get paid for it, and you do happen to have one of these meters that will not read in both directions, therefore it is not bidirectional, you would need to install a secondary meter. This secondary meter will register the amount of power that you generate only. And the first meter, which is already on your current home or business, will register the power you consume. The bad news is they generally do not pay you the same amount uh, in kilowatt hours as they charge you. In other words, they will bill you at one rate and then pay you at a lesser rate. You do not want this as a consumer. What you want is to use the existing meter and, and to offset most of the bill that you use. If you generate most of your own power, you would have a reduced electricity bill. We also sell other devices to help you reduce it, known as a power saver, which can be seen in an alternate video on the YouTube channel. Here we're noticing the numbers on this guy's power meter. If you notice now, it is no longer underlining the 1 and the 9, or before that the 9 and the 7. Now it's on the other side. Therefore, it is still registering that he is feeding into the grid, just not how much. I hope this explains to the viewer what net metering is and how it can work for you. If your existing power utility company does offer net metering, our unit could be a viable in income source or a viable offset to your current electricity needs. We hope you found this video informative. And I would also like to point out that most houses use around 2,000 watts per hour. 
some more, some less. Our unit generates 5,000 watts per hour. Therefore, it is very easy to see that our generating system would in fact produce a surplus for most people's houses. Therefore, you could draw more power in the daytime, possibly exceeding our generator, in which case the only the amount we could not generate you would be billed for. But at nighttime, when you're sleeping and the power demand is less, our generator would be putting that excess power that you should have been billed for back into the power grid. And, such as in this customer's case, it would not be registered to get paid, but his bill would not increase. Therefore, it might be advantageous for you as a consumer to check your local net metering rules and regulations or simply hook the unit up and generate what you can. If you need additional information, contact Global Solutions Educational Services about our generators and other power savings at 403-340-1952 or email us at smcdonal at kos.net.